Uh, in this example, we're going to show how we can use Mathematica to compute points along the coexistence curve uh, for a given equation of state, in this particular example, the van der Waals equation of state. So the way that the coexistence curve works is we start with a subcritical isotherm which in the theory uh, looks like this. The whole family of isotherms um, as we vary temperature, so this is some temperature less than Tc, the, uh, a, uh, an isotherm which is closer to Tc will tend to have a smaller loop, so-called van der Waals loop in it, and then at the critical uh, temperature it will just become flat here and so for the subcritical isotherms the way that you find the coexisting phases is by what's called the Maxwell construction and the Maxwell construction graphically speaking is that the um, not drawing this very well but that the area here and there are the same, or which is to say the area under this line, okay, the area of this box, okay, is the same as the area under this curve. So we can express that by saying we're trying to find the coexistence pressure at a given temperature, and there's three things that we need to be true. So we need P at the uh, liquid molar volume to be equal to this P. We need P at the vapor molar volume to be equal to P. And we need um, P times V vapor minus V liquid, that's the area of that box, okay, to be equal to the integral of P of V dV from V liquid to V vapor. Those are the three conditions. That's three conditions and the three unknowns are V liquid, V vapor, and P. And so they suffice to determine V liquid, V vapor, and P. Now for the van der Waals equation of state, we can write the pressure in reduced variables, that is reduced in terms of the critical uh, temperature and pressure as uh, 8t over 3v minus 1 minus 27 over 3v squared, and t means t over t, whoops, uh, t means t over tc. and V means the molar volume divided by RTC over PC, which is a sort of characteristic molar volume scale at the critical point, and P means P over PC. Now it turns out to be possible to integrate this function P of V, that is to do the indefinite integral of this, which would then allow us to have a function over here rather than an integral, okay? And so, um, and indeed you can do this either using what you learn in calculus class or uh, Mathematica is also good for this kind of thing. Uh, the answer for this integral is uh, 3 over V plus eight-thirds t log 3v minus 1. So that function between v vapor and v liquid um, is the third of these three nonlinear uh, algebraic equations that need to be solved. 
So the challenge, of course, is finding a decent initial guess for P, and then you find and then you find one point on this thing, and then you change the temperature, which changes this curve a little bit, and then you need to find another uh, value of coexistence pressure and another pair of points, and you keep changing T as you move along. Um, and so maybe the coexistence here looks, you know, the coexistence pressure looks like that. And then up here you finally get to the critical pressure. And then the locus of these molar volumes as a function of temperature uh, gives you the coexistence curve, which, you know, maybe looks like this. So here's a pair of points at some pressure. Here's a pair of points at some other pressure. They get closer and closer together as you get up close to the critical point where the van der Waals loop gets smaller. And then finally, you have the critical point. So in finding one of these values, you, you, know, you can plot the uh, isotherm and kind of guess as to what P ought to be. But then when you march through temperatures, it would make sense to use the value of the previous P, VL, and VV as your initial guess for the next temperature value and to kind of walk along the coexistence curve um, by using the previous values um, as the initial guesses for the next value. And that is something um, that uh, there are some facilities in Mathematica that make that um, very uh, easy to automate. So now we're going to turn to describing how you do these things uh, in Mathematica. Okay, so some preliminaries. Um, first, we write the van der Waals equation of state in the reduced units. And as I said, the um, the integrated van der Waals equation of state, well, it turns out we can actually do that integral. Um, and I can check that it's true by doing it here, integrating with respect to V. And I got that answer that I claimed. <clears throat> now, what I want to do is to compute a point on the van der Waals. Well, let's see. Before I do that, let's let's uh, make a plot of the um, of the van der Waals pressure. In fact, I'll make a plot of an entire family of um, of uh, of van der Waals isotherms. Like this, it's going to be a table of plots. And I will choose some range for the V, which turns out to show me something reasonable. And some range of temperature that uh, turns out to show me something reasonable in terms of van der Waals loops. Whoops. Didn't want to do it like that. wanted to show all those plots together. Like that. So we can see what's happening. There's the critical isotherm, there's the first subcritical, and so on and so on, and you see how the, um, the van der Waals loop pulls down and becomes more dramatic. Okay. So now we want to um, make a function that computes a point on the coexistence curve, uh, starting with some initial guess, uh, which is in the form uh, V1, meaning the liquid V2, 
uh, p0 and um, at some uh, reduced temperature t. So that'll be a function called compute van der Waals. It takes as its argument a list, as we'll see, of the uh, initial guesses and also t as a parameter. And what it does is it uses find root to solve a set of three equations. And the three equations are that the integrated van der Waals equation of state uh, between v2 and v1 is equal to, as I said, p times v2 minus v1. That's the first equation. The second one is that the coexistence pressure is the van der Waals pressure at v1. And the third equation is that it is also the pressure at the corresponding molar volume of the um, gas, the V2. And then as this is find root, we need to supply a list of the variables and the initial guesses. Which are, in turn, V1, initial guess of V10, V2, initial guess of V20, and pressure P, and initial guess of P0. Now, to see what kind of values we want, well, yeah, we need to plot a uh, coexistence curve and uh, choose a corresponding pressure that maybe is halfway reasonable. So let's try to plot uh, just one um, isotherm with the same um, with the value of t set to be, say, 0.95. Okay, so it looks like a coexistence pressure of maybe uh, 0.8 might be good for that. And with a value of, um, if this is 1, uh, 0.8, maybe 0.6 for the liquid, and maybe 1.5 for the vapor. So let's try that. Uh, uh, so what did I say? 0.6 for the liquid, 1.5 for the vapor, a pressure of 0.8 and a temperature of 0.95, and let's see if we get a sensible answer. Uh, no, we didn't. Okay, so to get some idea of a decent initial value, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to read one off of this graph. Um, and so there's this lovely little tool here that allows me to tell what the value of the um, cursor is there. So that's about 0.7. And it looks to me like, and that's about 1.8. So maybe there, that seemed to work. So I read off a liquid molar volume of about 0.7, a uh, vapor one of about 0.1.8 at a pressure of about 0.8. That looked to me about right. What it actually told me was, no, you want more like 0.56, more like 2.1, um, and a pressure of 1.18. That can't be right. Ah, so I made a typo here, and this needs to be the van der Waals integral, not the van der Waals function. So, my confusion about whether this was going to give something reasonable, let's try now. Ah, much better. So, my result for the liquid phase molar volume is 0.68. That's about right. My vapor one's 1.72. The pressure is almost the 0.8 that I guessed. So, very good. Um, those values I'm going to save as um, VL guess, V vapor guess, 
Oops, I'm typing into totally the wrong place. Um, I'm going to save those values as V liquid gas, V vapor gas, and P gas. Um, now, um, here is a marvelous trick that uh, Mathematica has for us. What we want to do, as I mentioned before, is to crawl up the coexistence curve using the previous result as the new initial guess. So there is a Mathematica function called fold list. And what fold list does is it iterates a function f onto a value x, but with a successive list of parameters. In other words, fold list, I'll just type what it uh, suggests here. Oftentimes, if you want to know what a function does, you um, you just use it with um, things that don't have any values yet, and then you get the formal sort of expression for what it would do if it knew values. So, initial guess. Function applied to initial guess with a parameter value. Function applied to that with a new parameter value. Function applied to that with a new parameter value. So if this thing here were a list of temperatures, and that thing there were a decent initial guess, then what we would get is a succession, and this function here were the one that finds a um, point on the coexistence curve, then what we'll get is a list of successive values on the coexistence curve. So the way that works is like this. So the function CVDW plays the, plays the role of the function. The initial guess that we want that gets the ball rolling is V1G, VV, VLG, VVG, PG. And the list of temperatures that we want is a table of temperature values, which let's say start with um, 0.95 and go down to 0.5 in steps of something or other that I've chosen so that I get a nice uh, mesh. That will then give me... Oops, I left out a bracket someplace. That will then give me a list of points in which, if you look at it, the pressure is steadily dropping Actually, this would be nicer to look at in table form. The pressure is steadily dropping as you go down. And the liquid molar volume is steadily going to a smaller value, and the vapor molar volume is steadily going to a bigger value, which is kind of what you expect for the coexistence curve as it drops. And then we can go up toward the critical point in a similar way. up from 0.95 to say 0.995 in little tiny steps of 0 0.05 and I get another range of values which if I look again with table form does the right thing the critical pressure is rising toward 1 which you remember in reduced units, the critical pressure at the critical point would be one. And these values are starting to approach each other, though I haven't gotten quite up to the top of the coexistence curve uh, yet. And then I can plot this thing. Um, I can take those coexistence values and join them together. Um, I might want to reverse those because they're sort of backwards. So I might say coex is uh, join of reverse of coax 1 and coax 2. And then the corresponding temperature values uh, would be a join of the two temperature value uh, ranges. And I can just grab those out of there. So it would be the reverse of the first one and then the second one. Like that. <clears throat> and then 
I can list plot, uh, for example, the um, the liquid branch of the coexistence curve would be a list plot of a list of pairs which I can get by taking the coexistence values um, the first ones and then put that together with the temperature values which I want to be the y-axis of this thing, not the x-axis, so I put it over here. And the corresponding vapor values would be the second entry. from the coexistence data. And then I can show those two together. Oh, that didn't work. So why didn't that work? Um, what I forgot was that the uh, fold list puts the first value uh, on the front, and we didn't actually want that. Um, so we need to get rid of that by dropping it in each case off of the lists that we put together to get the coexistence data and now the t valves and the coexistence have the same length and so the squawking that Mathematica did when I tried to make those plots goes away Ah, there. If I want to blow this up so that I can see what's going on a little better, I might choose a range for the pressure of 0 to 1 and for the molar volume um, 0 to, I don't know, 6, because the, the vapor one's getting very big. Oh, backwards. Um, the X is the molar volumes and the Y is the pressure there. And so now you can see what the coexistence curve really looks like. The critical point it's trying to get to is right there. Um, and those are a set of uh, liquid and vapor molar volumes that um, that come from um, having stepped along the coexistence curve using fold list. So Really, the ingredients of this were two things. They were a function which takes an initial guess and a temperature value and produces a new value. And then the use of fold list to step along using that function from a known good starting point along a table of temperature values. And this is a general technique for solving any kind of nonlinear equation or any kind of hard to solve equation that depends on having a good initial guess and also involves varying a parameter. So it can sometimes be the case that you have a parameter in a system that you vary away from a case that you know and step along trying to follow the solution and um, this is a very useful uh, tool for doing that in Mathematica.